So we have one of the uh, founders of Hadoop here, uh, and we're going to talk about big data. Companies like uh, Union Pacific are putting sensors all over the place. They have uh, 40 million hits a day. And I think every company is going to be faced with this kind of data flow problem soon, and you're going to need systems to handle it. And uh, uh, we're going to hear from Datamir right now about how, how we can better use uh, the flood of data that's coming, and, and maybe even win a gold medal or something like that. Hi, I'm Stefan Kroschup, uh, founder and CEO of Datamir. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm kind of an open source hacker. Uh, I started um, working on first Eclipse, a development environment, later on JBoss. But um, in the early 2000s, I got involved with Doc Cutting and Andres Bialecki in this open source search engine called Nudge. They later spun off Hadoop. And, um, Beside contributing some code there, um, I also my claim to fame is also I, I helped to design the logo for Hadoop. Um, yeah. But um, you know, beyond that, uh, what was a lot of fun is is building this next generation of data analytics platforms that we did uh, for companies uh, like a, a nice little company in Cupertino or uh, big telcos, media companies to predict who's the next music star, and that led us to uh, found Datamia. We are, um, we're helping subject matter experts to, to very, very easy to work with data rather than you know, have to hire a whole bunch of um, data scientists and, and experts. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem because running a Hadoop cluster alone uh, takes a few people who are pretty smart, people like no. you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some people like me running those data, data centers at uh, eBay and whatnot, right? Yeah, it's getting easier. I mean, especially with, um, you know, kind of packaged service offerings like Rackspace has, right? Uh, where you can just switch it on. Um, the, the challenge is um, certainly, you know, on all different layers, right? You have the infrastructure to run, but what we really passionate about, what our mission is to, to make this big data analytics um, as easy to use it, everybody can use it, yeah. right? The challenges you have, I incredible insights hidden in noisy data, let's say healthcare, right? Um, and you have a doctor who would like to extract information, but the reality is you have to hire a whole army of really smart IT people, now we even call them data scientists, to work with the data. And we wanna close this gap. We really wanna empower the subject matter expert, the doctor, um, you know, people work in marketing or, or trainers of, of teams to really look at the data and um, find insights that improve. Um, so there's a number of companies, we talked about a few that have already visited me, mm -hmm. th that are trying to do similar things, right? right. What makes you, what makes Datamere different than, than the other companies who are helping uh, companies set up big data systems and right. see uh, insights? In? So I, I think fundamentally we see the whole thing a little bit different. A lot of companies do the same old thing we do since 40 years, a little bit faster, a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more colorful. But um, if, if we step back for a second, Hadoop isn't just a storage and compute platform, it's actually a virtualization platform. Um, you have VMware, we have one physical machine and many virtual machines on top. Hadoop's actually the upside down. You have many physical machines yeah. and one virtual storage and compute. And if you get to the point that storage and compute doesn't matter, you can disrupt processes, right? If you think about your iPhone, um, putting it all together made this like ultimate device you can do everything on, but it requires Moore's law coming to a certain point that you can enable this. And this is kind of the way you can think about Datamere. We basically build it an extremely easy to use front end, looks and feels like a spreadsheet user interface like your Excel in the web browser. And it doesn't require what you used to do the last 40 years, design and model data schemas and do ETL and do data cleaning. And, and the folks you had here, they're really focusing on helping you to clean the data. What's an, subject, uh, what's an expert job? Why do you need to be a data expert to do this? Where we basically just give you something as simple as you know, a spreadsheet, but with the horsepower of that you know, unlimited storage and compute behind so that everybody can just analyze uh, any kind of data. You, you showed me a video where you, uh, Datamir helped the uh, women's cycling team win a silver medal, right? Yeah. And you did that by y using sensors and quantified self-data 
which is getting to be quite popular. I mean, Apple's <laughs> going to have a watch soon, and there's yeah. Fitbit and Java and Fieldman and on, on and on, right? The, these uh, sensors that we're wearing are spitting off data. Right. Um, and then there's uh, companies like Union Pacific putting uh, sensors underneath the railways, and they're getting 40 million hits a day. And it's very similar kind of data. Yeah a different pattern and a different use case, right? Uh, how do you help companies or teams like this get started and mm -hmm. see something in the data that they wouldn't have seen without your tool, I guess? Right. So or your service. The, what is very interesting is that those companies not just have more data, more number of records. The problem for companies like Union Pacific or for the US Olympic cycling team is the complexity of data. But right, everybody just talks about big data. Big data is a little bit misleading. The challenge is that the speed of business significantly increases, what means we have less time to make decisions, but the number of data sources increases, right? Yeah. And getting that context around something by getting everything together is the challenge of every, everybody. Right? The, the sensor readings of um, you know, whatever device are really interesting, but what makes it more interesting is to put other sensor readings, other data around, like the schedule of the trains or you know the, the, the freight delivery uh, schedule, what, what have you. Um, and what we, again, helping companies is to really integrate and get that 360 degree view, right? It's not just crunch to more data, it's actually a rather simple problem with Hadoop to just scale out. The challenge really is to get that more holistic view, and if you have a more holistic view, you have a more complete context, and you can make smarter decision based on that. I've heard several marketers uh, and at, at conferences talk about 360 view of the customer. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so so for example, um, we worked with uh, with one of the biggest insurance companies in the U.S., and their challenge was sure. People, you know, have live events and they they, they change the provider. Yeah. In their case, um, the the area of focus was people retire and they don't need the you know life insurance product that they used to offer. So, <clears throat> in the twenty first century, we engage with customers in person, um, in a call center, on mobile devices, on um, on you know, a website, and um, even beyond that, we have information about our customers, you know, like credit score and so on and so on. Um, interestingly enough though, traditionally that are all data silos, right? So you look at the credit score and make a decision about, you know, is it worth to engage with the customer or not? Or you look at your website analytics and you're trying to understand what are people doing on my website? But if you're putting this all together in this specific case, they lower churn by 30%. Yeah. And what they could do, what they could see is like, oh, there's a life event. People move from New York to Florida. Very likely they just retired, right? They look at the terms and condition on the website. They called into the call center to ask about their policy. So if there's multiple signals, and again, the, the, the challenge for a lot of companies is that those signals happen in different channels. Yeah. And bringing them together is very, very painful and very slow and takes you an army. And actually research show it, it takes you 18 months to get um, more than like five different data silos together. And we're solving that problem by basically pre-connecting to all of those and just give you a spreadsheet user interface so you can get going right away with the power of Hadoop. How, how do you charge? I assume that because we're talking about big companies like banks and railroads, yeah. <laughs> that this is hundreds of thousands of dollars? Or you know, we, we charge based on kind of the size of the environment, basically. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, our mission is really to empower everybody. So we don't charge based on users. Yeah. So it's the same price if it's five or 5,000 users. Um, we believe that um, analytical insights, you know, can make a difference in the world. So we don't charge how much you analyze. Really just looking at the data pipe that goes into the system in, and try to extract value there. I expect you're hitting two kinds of customers. One that is very advanced and probably uh, worked with you on Hadoop, you know, and, and has some uh, data scientists on the team, you know, mm -hmm. uh, companies like. Uh, uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to avoid mentioning companies, but yeah. really advanced team. And then there's a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of companies who are being asked to study their customer more or asked to see more about what's going on in the world and, and do things to compete with the other guys who are doing a better job. And they're lost. They yeah. don't know what to do. And, and they're starting to think about, oh, uh, Union Pacific put sensors on their railroad. They got more efficient. 
my railroad needs to do that, or my tractor company needs to do that, right. or well, you saw you're seeing what uh, Uber is doing to the taxi business. Right. The taxi either gets on board and and figures out how to do technology, or they go away. Right? Yeah. You know, we see data as a new competitive advantage in every organization, right? So Uber is a great example, um, and they obviously heavily um, analyze their data to optimize pricing, you know, supply and demand, uh, and demand certainly, right? So that's, I mean, you can, you can really map this to every organization we hit. And we definitely see different profiles where some are a little bit more sophisticated uh, and other not. But the overall challenge again and again and again is that, um, data, that organizations try to democratize data. And this is really where we come in to close that gap. Um, what was really interesting for us to see is that, and you know, I'm I'm a tech nerd. I'm, I'm open source hacker. I'm really kind of the left brain kind of guy, right? But what we see is that in a lot of organizations, those subject matter experts that trying to creatively resolve uh, resolve problems are the right brain kind of people. So in and traditionally, and you know, I was part of that. You know, the techies meet on a weekly basis with you know some problem solvers in the business. And then they try to find a common language and the techies roll their eyes like, oh my God, really do I have to do this again? Let me explain again to you. Where obviously the, the other folks, the subject matter experts kind of rolling the eyes like, you still didn't get what customer retention is. And that's kind of where the whole idea came um, is about you know, moving that over there and power the folks. Um, and we see amazing things. We had this one young guy that um, looked at, you know, optimizing a supply chain and he added weather data. You know, traditionally, if you go to your IT department and say, hey, why don't you change this uh, incredible expensive data warehouse and we load some weather data that I found on this website over there. Uh, usually, usually the, the bearded uh, database administrator like, um, what did you have for breakfast? Yeah. But you know, having a having a tool that limitly scales and you can just very quickly dive into things and, and mesh things together and, and poke around, the guy actually found significant opportunity to improve. And of course they sell more ice cream and water if it's hot. It's also a question of, you know, what's in the news, right? If they are even if the um, yeah, storm isn't coming anywhere close, it just emotion leads people to buy more batteries and more packaged food and it was really interesting to see. So if, I, if I'm a company that doesn't have a data scientist on, on board and I know I need to uh, set up a system like an Uber or something yeah. to study uh, sensors in, in my uh, uh, restaurants or whatnot, how, how do I get started and what, what do I need to do before calling you? <laughs> you know, what, what mistakes do you see people making that right. before they call you? Yeah. So, technically, nothing to be prepared, right? So we run on uh, the public cloud offerings like Rackspace, um, but we also run in your data center. So for us, we don't care. We sell software. We can run here or there. So you can invest into a data center or you can just use the public cloud. Um, I think the, the, the biggest mistake or maybe the, um, the biggest hurdle is really kind of a decision as an organization. Do I want to convert to a data-driven organization? Do I really want to make data kind of the new competitive advantage? And um, is it just a project that runs in the basement with the IT folks or is it a project that actually all the way up people buy in and, um, you know, like really stay behind and, and, and support this, right? Because sometimes we see organization, they since 40 years doing the same thing and believe in that and um, yeah, just give me the report. But the report keeps answering the same question since 40 years. Where we see the big breakthroughs is really where um, people discover new insights and really considering to take a different perspective yeah. and then amazing things happen. And a, a lot of organizations like Opower, for example, then make this even products. Facebook just showed a video um, with a retailer, and I forget the retailer's name, but they they used to be doing a lot of direct mail and a lot of newspaper yeah. advertising, and then they started studying, you know, instrumenting it to study uh, where that business, uh, how, how it affected their business, and then they ran some ads uh, online, and they saw what that did for the business, and it was pretty different. How do you set up something like that to, mm. to study uh, 
customers in a new way right so that you can see that new insight and go oh <laughs> i found right. a way to make more money here <laughs> right you know the the marketeers usually have a pretty good idea about this but you know a very concrete ex, um example Not all of them, though. i mean yeah. I, here we're in san francisco and people sure. talk about this at, at lunch right uh, you go to other places and they don't know what a Hadoop cluster is. You know? So, ex ex <laughs> well, exactly, right? The marketeer yeah. doesn't know what Hadoop is. Yeah. And actually, he shouldn't. He should not know, right? right. If, as you're using an iPhone, you should know it's a Unix environment under the hood and it's using, you know, like an old C um, derivative that Apple just. It doesn't really matter. I think what it matters for the person uh, that tries to understand customers is. Okay, what kind of um, what kind of data points can I also you know um, legally and um, you know ethically collect about the customer yeah. and um, get a better understanding, right? The, the the traditional challenge for those guys now is just the overwhelming channels they engage with, right? Traditional um, retailers. Uh, they sell online and in the store. Are people looking online and buy in the store? Or looking in the store, buy online, right? And um, bringing this together and, and looking at this uh, then usually allows you to to optimize certain things. In the end, data gives you insights and cues in which direction you need to optimize processes um, or you know how you can better engage with customers. But as, a, as an organization, you still need to do this um, and, and really implement this. But as mentioned, the, the beauty of what we're bringing to the table is you open your web browser, you point it at um, your data me installation in the cloud or on your data center, and there's a spreadsheet. And you just say, okay, let's take all the tweets we have about our products. Let's take the product catalog we have. Uh, let's take the pricing. Let's take the marketing campaigns. Put this all together and let's see, is there any kind of public opinion that moves product faster? Or is there pricing campaigns we did on social media that moves actually product? Because at this point, people just looking at social media or people just looking at, okay, my ERP system, right? Again, bringing this together then helps you to, to get the big picture. And that's the problem. A lot of organizations um, looking to a soda straw in different departments and different marketing campaigns uh, it's all about, as you say, context, right? Getting it together. And that's so challenging with traditional tools. Let's talk to the advanced CTO who, who yeah. has a nice data science team and knows how to build their own Hadoop cluster. Why use DataMir instead of build your own Why, or code your own? I, well, so if you hire an army of data scientists, um, they're not cheap. They're not cheap in San Francisco, they're not cheap in New York, and certainly not in Chicago um, if you find any of those. So what you want to make sure is that those people are absolutely productive, right? As wrangling with data takes a lot of time of those kind of people, having them just focus on you know, optimizing a recommendation engine is what you want to do, right? So um, having a productivity tool like ours that just allows you to point and click things together is um, you know, incredible helpful to to use data as a competitive advantage. So, uh, can we see a little bit uh, about what the tool looks, uh, what Data Mirror looks like? Yeah. To a data scientist. Yeah, I mean, I would love to or analyze your Twitter feed, but uh, then I might have to give this over to you. But um, yeah, just to give you, uh, you know, a kind of a, a quick. You brought up Facebook. Um, this happened to be my very personal Facebook profile, so. Don't look too closely. But <laughs> what was really interesting here is that um, I, I do have a lot of friends in um, in my company. Actually, um, yeah. seems nice, and you know a lot of high school friends. And I, you know, I have this um, this one person really that connects the different the different areas. Then um, and then actually created friendships in between those circles, and I can see that right. And that's yeah. that's kind of interesting. So we have actually a. Uh, a political party um, uh, in the United States that use our product to really see how certain campaigns are very quickly triggering in social media, which idea resonates, which not, what's the sentiment. So for example, if I um, look at my um, Twitter data here, um, not as exciting, of course, as your 
I'm, I'm mostly tweeting positive things. Um, you know, I, I hope my folks are proud. As you can see, mostly big data related things. But here are the people that are engaging with me, right? Um, and, I, and I can drill down and, and really see what's going on. So um, doing a total analytics like this, um, again, it's not the most common use case for the banks and the retailers. But I think it's a very it gives you a sense of what you could do. Now, th were these charts created by Data Mirror? Yeah, or exactly. Did I have to create them? A a it after we, we actually have a little app market where you basically just uh, click here, install this Twitter analytics. Um, now it opens a page where I have to authorize uh, against Twitter. So um, I can do this with my account or if, if, if you would be interested with yours. Uh, use uh, yours because mine's two-factor <laughs> authentication and it's a real pain in the butt to get okay. them going on another so browser. So <laughs> with a click of a button and now I just um, press run. Now we're pulling the data, uh, we're running some analytics and in a second I can open again the infographic. Um, but um, that's kind of the, the packaged analytics we have here. The, the beauty of this, yeah, we, we just saw this before, uh, it's like a cooking show, right? Where yeah. I pull something out of the oven. But the really interesting thing is, um, if I really want to dive in and, and want to do certain things, it actually looks like Excel, right? So um, if I have some, um, let's see, maybe some log files here. Uh, first question is, do I want to pull all the log files in or just specific days? You know what, I, I just take everything here and you have a spreadsheet. Now you can work like a spreadsheet, but with the horsepower of Hadoop. So this can be petabytes of data. This can be, you know, we have <clears throat> one of the big banks. They uh, integrated hundreds of data sources to now do dot .frank act and Basel II uh, research. But interacting with this is as simple as Excel, right? You yeah. like, hey, let's have a function here. I can point and click to um, like group by, for example, my customers here. And, and very quickly, and you see, you get this real-time, nice real-time um, user feedback, uh, but then it compiles into MapReduce. That's kind of the um, compute engine on Hadoop and crunches through a lot of data. Live. So it, yeah. it, if you hooked up to sensors on your railway or uh, yeah. Twitter or uh, your cash receipts coming in, you know, yeah. if you're Walmart or something like that, you can see, it, uh, this is all a live system, so you can see the data in real time. Right? So. I mean, or near real time. Near real time. Like, yeah, right. So, so there's always a little of a delay, right? Because especially if you do analytics, you want to, for example, look over a, a time series data, right? Sensor data, they give you reading every whatever, 10 milliseconds, right? But you want to look over a period of time. So you usually um, collect data over a period of time and then we can link to the data if it sits in a database or in, you know, in the public cloud or uh, we actually can import it into a Hadoop environment. Doesn't really matter. But we have um, uh, actually Kebam, one of the biggest Facebook games, uh, heavily using our product and like every five minutes they pulling pulling data and based on that really improving consistently the design of the game and understand you know what engages a gamer and what not. What's really interesting is then that they really see different segments of gamers and how they interact and make the game even more interesting by playing against each other. So that's kind of the use cases we see. Very cool. Uh, tell me a little bit about the company. I, uh, how was it funded and, and how, many, how many people are there? Okay. Tell me a little bit about it. So um, the company is uh, four and a half years old. Um, Redpoint Ventures was the original investor, then very uh, quickly followed by um, uh, Kleiner Perkins, uh, who invested in us. And we now at our fourth round uh, also added um, Next World Capital and Citibank as a strategic investor, um, Workday, who also OEM'd our product. So if you see big data analytics at uh, Workday, um, then um, obviously another really big cloud company. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And um, Software AG. So we um, also closely partnered with some of our customers uh, and invested in the company since they, they, they really bet on the future. Where do we learn more about it? What's your, uh, where do you want people to go? Um, www.datamir.com. Um, uh, Mir, by the way, means ocean in German, if you didn't pick up my uh, German accent yet. Um, but uh, on our website, there's a, there's a lot of interesting use case videos, including the one of the Olympic team, uh, but also, uh, for example, Vivint, who is a, 
um, you know, Internet of Things kind of company for um, the, the home automation and, and, and more things. Well, that's a whole uh, area we could have explored a little bit because car companies are getting connected, the home is getting connected, and soon we're going to have lots of things on it's us that are going to spray data. Right? We have to be very mindful how we, how we work with data, right? There's a privacy issue, um, and I hope there's more public dialogue about this. Um, but in the end, I think we really need the tools to make that data valuable for everybody. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.